There was a time when it was obligatory, on pain of death or a heavy fine, for every Irish child to be called Patrick or Bridget. As time went on and the Irish discovered that there were more exotic names available, like John and Mary, that naming regime was relaxed and Bridget or Patrick just had to be included somewhere in the long string of middle names carried through life as an overwhelming burden by all persons of Irish birth or descent. Nowadays, the names Patrick and Bridget have almost entirely disappeared. The odd, sentimental soul might insist on them as a child's confirmation name, but Paddies and Biddies are a dying breed. In the case of Bridget, a name popularised by an early Christian saint, that may be entirely appropriate. Bridget, it transpires, could have wormed her way into our affections and loyalties under false pretenses. She may have been a pagan goddess. Now, to many of you, that would give her a genuine ratings boost, and begs the question, is a pagan god or goddess of higher standing than a mere Christian saint? Is the all-powerful Zeus, for example, who alternated between lightning bolts and floods to keep manners on humankind, further up the pecking order than St. Anthony, who's very sweet and gentle but just helps people find things? Or is that a bit like comparing oranges and melons? Or is it lemons? Anyway, let's get back to Bridget, by whom I mean, of course, Bridget of Kildare, founder of a number of convents in Ireland who died in 525 at the grand old age of 72, not Bridget of Sweden, a saint with no less than three different feast days, one in July, two in October. Obviously that rare phenomenon, a needy Scandinavian. There are some curmudgeonly Irish historians who actually think that the woman we now know as Saint Bridget might well have been chief druid at a pagan temple to the goddess of the same name. Her Christian feast day, the 1st of February, also happens to be the date of the pagan festival of Imbolc, Imbolc is up there with Bealtaine, Lunasa and Saun as one of the four great pre-Christian seasonal jamborees when Irish pagans would have let their hair down except that no one would have been able to see their spectacular golden ornaments anymore if they did. Because it was equidistant between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, Imbolc celebrated the beginning of spring, which is, in an Irish context, you have to say, a unique triumph of optimism over experience. Can any of us put our hands on our hearts and recall a single St. Bridget's Day that ever felt even remotely spring-like? The Christian Bridget had a heavy portfolio of responsibilities. In alphabetical order, these included babies, blacksmiths, boatmen, brewers, cattle, chicken farmers, children in trouble, dairymaids, fugitives, infants, Ireland, Leinster, midwives, nuns, poets, the poor, poultry farmers, printing presses, sailors, scholars and travellers. Phew. The pagan goddess Bridget had it easy by comparison. She was in charge of fertility, which, let's face it, can't have been a major problem in pre-Christian Ireland. The Christian Bridget had two miraculous talents, which must have made her very popular indeed, and will have convinced a lot of pagans that Christianity wasn't so bad after all. She could control the rain and wind, always a good trick on the rainy, windy periphery of Europe, and, with even more mass appeal, she could turn water into wine. A decided asset in a country where the best you could expect from a vine would be a cheeky vinegar chardonnay.